Wonderful are you, O God, in your holy place. The God of Israel himself gives his people strength and courage. Blessed be God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May mighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who year by year renew for us the day when this your holy temple was consecrated, hear the prayers of your people and grant that in this place, for you, there may always be pure worship and for us fullness of redemption. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the first book of Kings. In those days, Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord in the presence of the whole community of Israel, and stretching forth his hands toward heaven, he said, Lord God of Israel, there is no God like you in heaven, above or on earth below. You keep your covenant of mercy with your servants who are faithful to you with their whole heart. Can it indeed be that God dwells on earth? If the heavens and the highest heavens cannot contain you, how much less this temple which I have built? Look kindly on the prayer and petition of your servants. O Lord my God, and listen to the cry of supplication I, your servant, utter before you this day. May your eyes watch night and day over this temple, the place where you have decreed you shall be honored. May you heed the prayer which I, your servant, offer in this place. Listen to the petitions of your servant and of your people Israel which they offer in this place. Listen from your heavenly dwelling and grant pardon. The word of the Lord. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord mighty God. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord mighty God. My soul yearns and pines for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord mighty God. Even the sparrow finds a home and the swallow a nest 
in which she puts her young. Your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Blessed they who dwell in your house. Continually they praise you. O God, behold our shield and look upon the face of your anointed. I had rather one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I'd rather lie at the threshold of the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, you are God's building. According to the grace of God given to me, like a wise master builder, I laid a foundation, and another is building upon it. But each one must be careful how she builds upon it. For no one can lay a foundation other than the one that is there, namely, Jesus Christ. Do you not know that you are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy that person. For the temple of God, which you are, is holy. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Since the Passover of the Jews was near, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. He found in the temple area those who sold oxen, sheep, and doves, as well as the money changers seated there. He made a whip out of cords and drove them all out of the temple area with the sheep and oxen and spilled the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. And to those who sold doves, he said, Take these out of here and stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples recalled the words of Scripture, Zeal for your house will consume me. At this, the Jews answered and said to him, What sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered and said to them, Destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews said, This temple has been under construction for 46 years. and You will raise it up in three days? But he was speaking about the temple of his body. Therefore, when he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this. And they came to believe the scripture and the word Jesus had spoken. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Just in case you don't read everything that gets posted at diopit.org, the bishop has made certain decrees regarding this time of return to worship, including that communion will not be distributed within Mass but rather after Mass. So we'll cover that. I'll go back, take the chasuble off, come back, and then I'll give some instructions before distributing Holy Communion. But just myself and the server will be receiving actually during Mass. On the plus side, um, that does allow us to keep people here for the whole Mass. <laughs> no one gets to leave early. So perhaps there is a mild benefit to it all. Second, what a nice day to be back. Number one, we have too many feasts going on. What we're celebrating today, if you don't remember your historical events involving the dedication of this Christ the Divine Teacher Church that now serves St. Monica, May 31st was the anniversary of the dedication of this building, which is a proper solemnity, but it was impeded by a kind of a big deal Pentecost yesterday which means it gets transferred to today. 
So while we're one day late, it is liturgically true that it is the anniversary of the dedication of this building. Which I think is an important reminder, given that I am dead serious and dead certain that everything that has happened this year is the work of the evil one. The evil one sees this as his opportunity to finally finish the job of tearing down what we used to call Christendom. Later, when we wanted to sanitize it, we started calling it Western civilization. But there is no Western civilization except for Christendom. And when Christendom was built, the Catholic Church was the center of the town because the sacraments were the center of reality. The most real things happened in the church, principally the removal of sin and the feeding with divine bread. It's no mistake that an epidemic of fear has prevented access to churches. It's no mistake that fear turned to anger. And remember, anger is always rooted in fear. Now leads to churches being attacked. The evil and those who through sin have associated themselves with him hates the body of Christ and wishes to destroy it. Important call to action for us who are faithful. We will maintain the body of Christ, the church, even to the point of the shedding of blood. And that's a glorious outcome. Those who die a martyr's death are the most happy in heaven. So while fear is a very real thing, so is courage. One of those gifts we received yesterday at Pentecost. God's faithful must constantly be filled with that spirit of courage and piety. For what we do here really is the center of all reality. For it's what flows from the cross of Christ. How sad it is that in around the 1950s, you see the effects. We stopped building our churches quite so beautifully. They went from masterpieces of stone and marble to kind of, they started looking kind of bowling alley-like, and it spiraled out of control from there. And now we have no trouble getting rid of them and shutting them down because no one's in them. The devil plays the long game, but we and our Lord Jesus Christ play the eternal game. It's important to remember who wins in the end and to constantly seek that victory. May God bless you and God love you. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We place before Almighty God these our prayers and petitions. 
for Pope Francis, all bishops, priests, and deacons. May the Spirit draw them together to devote themselves with one accord to prayer. Let us pray to the Lord. For government officials, may God give them eyes of mercy and hearts of truth to seek the common good and care for those they serve. Let us pray to the Lord. For all mothers, especially expectant mothers facing uncertainty or poverty, may God give them the grace they need to lovingly welcome their children into our world, as Mary did. Let us pray to the Lord. For this community gathered here in worship, may the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary help us grow in grace, fortitude, and fear of the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who have died, may the angels and saints soon welcome them into the heavenly kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. For James Young, for whom the holy sacrifice, that's not the right one, sorry. For Peggy Marcisco, for whom the holy sacrifice of the Mass is being offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord God, I to hear these prayers and grant them if they be in accord with your divine and holy will through Christ our Lord. Brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Recalling the day when you were pleased to fill your house with glory and holiness, O Lord, we pray that you make of us a sacrificial offering always acceptable to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For in this visible house you have let us build, and where you never cease to show favor to the family on pilgrimage to you in this place, you wonderfully manifest and accomplish the mystery of your communion with us. Here you build up for yourselves the temple that we are and cause your church spread throughout the world to grow ever more and more as the Lord's own body till she reaches the fullness, her fullness in the vision of peace, the heavenly city of Jerusalem. And so with countless ranks of the blessed in the temple of your glory, we praise you, we bless you, and proclaim your greatness as we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, and all, all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants.
and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, the blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers and all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands. With eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, as Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you are pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, mighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. To us also, your servants, who those sinners hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ.
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away. Behold the Lamb of God, behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the Supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. You are the temple of God, and the Spirit of God dwells in you. The temple of God, which you are, is holy. Let us pray. May the people consecrated to you, O Lord, we pray, receive the fruits and joy of your blessing, that the festive homage they have offered you today in the body may redound upon them as a spiritual gift through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Bow down for the blessing. May God, the Lord of heaven and earth, who has gathered you today in memory of the dedication of this church, make you abound in heavenly blessings. And may he, who has willed that all his scattered children be gathered together in his Son, grant that you may become his temple and the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thus, may you be made thoroughly clean so that God may dwell within you, and you may possess with all the saints the inheritance of eternal happiness. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. <laughs>